Did you know that lithium batteries are more energy dense than TNT explosives? Which means they pack a lot of power in a very small space. And this is what makes them so fascinating. But this is also what makes them extremely dangerous. The other day I was scrolling through YouTube and I saw this video. Wanna make 18650 battery packs? Watch this first. So the intro was interesting, explaining how dangerous are the lithium ion batteries. And yes indeed, they are extremely dangerous if not handled properly. The explosion is way too exaggerated, but it depends now how big the battery pack is. And after I saw the video has over 200,000 views. So I thought this guy must have made a really good video or the battery is very well put together. I have seen a fair bit of misinformation in DIY projects, especially while building batteries. And I thought I should provide a safer way of building lithium ion packs. If you think there's something that can be improved or done better, comment below, please. The goal of this video is how to make safer batteries. I really like Mike from Electric. His reviews are just amazing. The batteries in a scooter or a motorcycle are exposed to vibration. I would not bend this battery with different polarities and connect them this way. This can potentially end up really bad. What is going to happen with your motorcycle, scooter, let's say electric skateboard? Let's take a moment and look at several short clips just to show you what can potentially happen if a battery pack is not constructed properly. I have received a lot of questions on how to build lithium-ion batteries and I feel bad for not directing to the right websites and providing the information necessary to build lithium packs in a safer way. I strongly recommend following Tesla videos on battery construction and tear down forums that talk about Tesla battery safety system, watching YouTube videos on Tesla fuses systems, batteryuniversity.com, Tesla websites, Tesla postings, people that follow safety guidelines and properly put together battery cells like Jaco Garcia and his channel and there's many more like that that are focusing on this subject. So after seeing so many posts on Facebook and videos on YouTube, I decided to share with you how I build my battery packs for various DIY projects or electric portable vehicles and steps that I go through and what to avoid and how to safely construct your lithium ion batteries. Number one, we need to know how much power or how many amps maximum the motors can withdraw in our application. Number two, we need to calculate the size and the power output of the battery we will be making. The cells we choose have to be able to deliver combined the required amount of amps. Number three, the bus bars or the connection between the group of cells that are connected in parallel are capable to deliver this amount of power. You have to make sure these bars are wide and thick enough to let the necessary amount of amps to travel through them without heating or burning the connections. Number four, the cells have to have spacing between each other. You can use this type of spacers or this type of insulator. Number five, now this is the most important part, the fuses. You need to know how many amps the cell is capable of delivering at continuous discharge and max poles. Let's say the cell is designed to deliver 15 amps continuous and 20 amps peak for maximum load of 10 seconds. When you draw more than 10 seconds at 20 amper cells, for example, the cells will heat up and eventually burst or explode. The fuse has to be thick and wide enough to deliver only 15 amps continuously and at 20 amp load, the fuse should burn and disconnect in 5 to 7 seconds before the cells get damaged and goes into a terminal runaway. Why is this important? Let's say the fuse did it part and disconnected the cell when it was overloaded. This way you save your entire pack or your scooter or skateboard and you have to open the battery up and replace the bad cell and replace the fuse. Otherwise, if you have a very thick, very wide 
piece of nickel strap connecting the cell to the group of cells, the connection will be active until the cell bursts and runs into a thermal runaway, will ignite, will explode, will trigger the chain effect and will uh, catch on fire the entire group and eventually the entire battery. Once this chain reaction ignites, there's not much that you can do. The entire battery, entire vehicle will burst in fire and all the areas surrounding it. So having this fuse system implemented, it's so important. It will save your vehicle, yourself, and your property. Number six. You have to make sure the battery pack is properly isolated, avoiding any areas that can touch and short the cell or the group of the cells. Number seven. Operating the battery in different weather conditions. In the winter time, you have to make sure you insulate the battery to avoid the cells getting cold. In the summertime, you have to make sure there's enough airflow around the battery so the cells do not heat up and work under required temperatures. These are the most important aspects that I'm looking at when building a DIY battery. Guys, please do not use hot glue or any kind of epoxy to glue the cells together. Do not solder lithium ion cells. The heat will damage the cells. Having the right size fuse will disconnect the cell from the parallel group and save the entire pack. This is super, super important. Now, e-boards, scooters, and e-bikes have less space available, so you have to engineer your battery pack with a space available and configuration that will work the best for you. But you have to take in consideration all the safety measurements while building and operating lithium-ion packs. When it comes to a car battery, where you can fit thousands of cells, Positioning the cells vertically is the best option and building and isolating them is so much easier. The same principle can be applied in any vehicle portable or not. A lot of people start building bigger battery packs today in a very wrong way. This issue has to be more discussed and better addressed and more info and attention should be added to this area to avoid injuries and property damages. People need to know and understand the risk involved into using or building lithium-ion batteries. If you're using LiPo's or bigger lithium-ion battery packs that do not have this fuse system, I strongly recommend using a metal fireproof box or a shed that is fireproof and away from your house. Don't take shortcuts, always use proper tools on building your battery. I also recommend looking and studying what Tesla does. Tesla has the best battery made today. This giant machine that builds the machine. The point of the Gigafactory is to get the cost of batteries down to the point where it's affordable. Right. Batteries are critical to a sustainable energy future. The sun doesn't shine all the time, so you gotta store it in a battery. I hope I stirred enough interest with this video and people follow the steps at least. If you watch this video until the end, please share it so more people learn or comment if they have any useful information to share on this topic. Thank you so much for watching and all your support and I'll see you next time.